All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Zabo again, here to talk about the weighted mean. This is used when data occurs with different frequencies or weights. Oftentimes, but not always, this is displayed as a table. So in this case, we see that we have zero job offers, one, two, three, or four job offers, but a different number of students who received those job offers so two students received no job offers and one student or two students received one job offer if we were to list all of this out it would look a lot different we would have to write out zero twice that's the two students who got no job offers one would have to be listed twice and two would be listed twice three would be listed seven times four, five, six, and seven, and four would be listed six times. And it perfectly fits. So we would have to list all 19 students. So this is a way of doing that without listing them all out. So which measure of central tendency best describes the typical number of job offers received by these college students. We can't just take 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 because 0 happens twice, 3 happens 7 times. We have to consider this. Instead of having to write it all out this way though, to find the mean, we can do this by taking what we call the weighted average or the weighted mean. That's going to be taking the number of job offers times the number of students with that job offer zero offers times two students plus one offer times two students plus two offers times two students and so on but until we have three offers seven students so that's putting a heavier weight on three job offers and four job offers times six students we have to divide by the total number of students the two plus two plus two plus seven plus six 19 total students when we calculate this out, calculate your numerator, divide by 19, we get an average of 2.7 job offers. The median is still the middle, and it's a little bit harder without the list. In the list, we can go through the list and look at it and say, okay, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the low end, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 on the high end. But I could have looked at that this way too, 2, 4, 6 on the low end with the six on the high end. And then I could look and see, well, all that's left are threes. My median is gonna have to be three. One, two, one, two, one, two. It happens to be that three, but I don't have to do it that way if I can identify that from the table. Mode is gonna be whichever has the largest occurrence or frequency. That's seven, so three job offers is also the mode. As we look at the data set, we have either 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Because that's the only options, not any one of those seem unusually high or unusually low for the data. I'd say that there's no outliers in this case. So for that reason, really any of the three measures of central tendency would work. But because there's no outliers, I typically like to use the mean. All right, so why don't we go to the next page. You guys go ahead and press pause and try to do the mean, median, and mode for this frequency table and then determine if there's outliers, and if so, or if not, which central tendency you would use. So with 26 total students calculating our weighted mean, we have 2.4 books a mode of 2, because that has 10, that's the most, and a median of 2, again, if I look at it this way, I see 6 and 1, I see 7 on the low end, I can take 4, 5, and then 3 of these, well, the 1 extra 3 is going to cancel with 1 of the 2's, and then all that's left is 2's, that gives me my median. But in this case, are there any outliers? And I'd say yes, because we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we skip a bunch and go to 8. To me, that says that eight's an outlier. And therefore, I would use the median or the mode. In this case, those are identical, so it doesn't matter which one we use. Now, if the mode was zero, I probably wouldn't use the mode. I would use the median, but then the median might be shifted as well. So like I said, it's not 
always going to appear in a table. Sometimes it's going to just be appearing as a list, and we still need to calculate the weighted mean or the weighted averages. And that's exactly how your grades are also calculated. So here what I would do is I'd create a table. You're told that in this case, your grade is weighted so that it's 50% for tests. So I have a test weight of 50% which is 0.5. My quizzes are weighted at 15% or at 0.15. My homework is rated at 15%, which is still 0.15. And that your final exam is weighted at 20%, which is 0.2. Altogether, that's going to create a weight of 100%, which would then represent 1.00 or 1.0 or just 1. So how we would calculate your grades then is we have an 86 for tests, 90 for quizzes, 100 for homework, and you get a 35 on the final. The question is, does this student get an A? Well, to calculate the weighted average or the weighted mean, we have to take our test percent times the test score plus the quiz percent as a decimal times the quiz score plus the homework percent as a decimal times the homework score plus the final exam percent as a decimal times the final exam score. Divide by the total weight which is 100% or 1 or 1.0. So this student who had an 86% B plus almost for tests, 90% for quizzes and 100% for homework, so that would give them an A but they got a 35% on the final. When we calculate their weighted mean, their weighted average grade, they are at a 78.5%. That's obviously not an A. And they got dropped down to a C because their final exam hurt them so bad. All right, one more video for this first day in notes. And on this video, we are going to talk about a box and whisker plot. So go ahead, switch on over to the next video.